Chapter 19 Retrieving Hestia's Knife Lucius POV Dungeon 6th Floor In the dungeon, a man ran from various monsters, trailed by a strange creature carrying a backpack. The man struggled a bit to kill the monsters, indicating he was a common level 0 one, but he was content with slaying everything he encountered on the upper floors so far. Slash Slash I found myself now, cutting down those ants on the 6th floor, while Reekling picked up stones from the ground. It was much more enjoyable to explore the dungeon this way. After battling on the sixth floor, I decided to head to the intermediate floors. Bell passed by me on the fifth floor with his support without noticing me, so they are probably reaching the tenth or eleventh floors in a few hours. I continued at the same pace until the ninth floor, where a monster outbreak suddenly occurred. Sensing everything shake, I asked Reekling to be on guard with his spear. Really? This has never happened to me in the dungeon, but all these signs indicate a large number of dungeon spawns. H-E-E-E, -E -E, he responded. Let's see what's coming and what will happen, I said as I sheathed my sword and prepared both hands to cast firebolts. We could hear the distant screams of dozens of monsters in the dark corridors ahead. When the first ones appeared in our sight, we saw the origins of the screams, about sixty goblins and kobolds running towards me and reekling with fury in their eyes. I don't know what causes this, but the dungeon rarely sends these groups to kill many adventurers. Any other level one would have to run, but I'm glad I can test the effectiveness of my uncanted magic for the first time. Pointing my two hands without saying a word, my hands lit up, and fires shot out like a machine gun over the group. Flame! Asterisk boom asterisk. Hugh? Asterisk boom asterisk. Hugh? Asterisk boom asterisk. 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 In the next 20 seconds, this area became engulfed in flames with my firebolt machine gun. I didn't even know if they were already dead, but I waited to cast until the 20 seconds were up. Fuck 80 fireballs. I shouted in astonishment as I looked at the sea of flames in front of me. Besides controlling the spell and casting without incantation, I could cast with both hands. With each hand launching two firebolts per second, I was a destruction machine. Even though the spell is weak in terms of first-class adventurers, I can destroy even early level 3 adventurers if they underestimate me, I believe. However, I would be dead if any of them approached with my physical stats. I couldn't help but think about my disadvantages. Anyway, I'm working on that. I said to myself. He. My partner's voice snapped me out of my thoughts. Did you see that? That's my secret weapon. I said proudly. He. I don't know why, but I understand everything this creature says. Suddenly, I opened the system, remembering there was an exclamation point in one of the tabs, so I clicked on missions. About the new spells I acquired in the last few hours, new spell missions appeared with no surprise. Strength Booster Mission, cast 1000 Strength Boosters. Rank 2 Progress, 1 slash 1000 a 0% reward user can cast spell without incantation. Speed Booster Mission Rank 2, cast 1000 Speed Boosters. Progress, 1 slash 1000 a 0% reward, user can cast spell without incantation. Goblin Summoning Mission Rank 2, keep the goblin active for 100 hours. Progress, 1 slash 100 a 1% reward, user can cast spell without incantation. From all the information, the first thing I thought about was Reekling's mission, where I have to keep him summoned for 100 consecutive hours. It seems like these challenges are for people without infinite mana like me. There are no missions for rank 1, but when looking at the other missions, they are much more time-consuming, not because of the difficulty, but casting 1000 support spells lasting 2 minutes each will take a while. Snapping out of my thoughts, I saw the sea of fire extinguish, and I waited for my new companion to start collecting the magic stones scattered on the ground. Once he finished, we continued walking. Shortly after, we were entering the mist of the intermediate floors as we exited the ninth floor. By some luck, I found Bell and his support's location quite quickly. I stayed in a corner at a distance without attracting attention, observing their interactions. Bell had bought that Kratzo armor a few days ago, as he was in his classic look from the beginning of the first season of the anime. I realized that Bell is indeed much faster physically than me. He? I heard my partner beside me watching my actions. Who are you calling a stalker? I said with a vein on my forehead. Wait, how do you know the term? Forget it, I don't want to know. 
I looked strangely at him but soon didn't want an answer to my question. He. I ignored the protest and continued paying attention to my family companion. I envy the protagonist's power. I thought, sighing as I watched Bell kill his enemies with his knife and agility. Asterisk boom, asterisk. Asterisk boom, asterisk. I heard his firebolts exploding in the distance. I had moved a bit farther away to avoid being discovered by any of them or the men I am looking for, but I no longer see any of those adventurers who will ambush Lily later. Suddenly, I noticed Lily running backward away from Bell, tossing small odor balls on the ground, items that can attract monsters to Bell while he is not looking. Lily? Lily? Bell shouted, seeing that his support had moved out of his line of sight and couldn't see her anywhere. I sighed, Bell is too kind and naive, even though he was warned that this could happen, he still acted like an innocent, trusting Lily. I know she has become important to the Hestia family, but there are things that are hard to swallow. I held back the last time she leaked information about me to members of her family, Soma, some who still know Lily is alive, but I admit I was tempted to kill her. After that, three orcs surrounded Bell, and while he fought to dodge, Lily, from behind, shot arrows with ropes to retrieve Hestia's knife. How can she do that? I don't understand this logic. Honestly, I hope you can survive. The girl said as she went up the stairs after her villain speech, returning to the upper floors. Sighing and seeing Bell in trouble, I raised my hand. Bell POV. In the same place. Lily? I thought lamentably. I have to catch up to her. I said to myself as I dodged the blows from these monsters. I couldn't attack and get rid of them without a weapon, and my magic was low, only dodging. This is frustrating. I screamed in my mind. But while I was in my despair, fireballs started to appear from the midst of the mist. The orcs were hit by a sequence of two shots each around me, the smoke covered the entire view, but I saw that all the monsters were easily disintegrated after that without me getting hurt in the middle of this attack. C.O.F. C.O.F. Coughing with all the smoke, I was shocked by the power of whoever did this, which reminded me a lot of my firebolt but helped me effortlessly. I waited for a moment standing in the same place, with three crystals at my feet, but not seeing any response within the mist. Even though I expected this adventurer who cast magic to want these crystals, I realized that whoever helped me had already left. Despite wanting to thank my savior, I didn't waste any more time, I ran up the stairs to catch up with Lily, unfortunately without thanking my savior. Sometime later. Unknown POV. Another place, not far from Bell. Ha ha ha, look at this knife. We're going to get rich, said a beast man to his friends as they walked back to the surface. That foolish Pelham really believed in U.S. I didn't even bother remembering her name, now she'll die devoured by ants, said another, laughing. However, as they walked leisurely in their group of eight adventurers, they spotted something very unusual in the dungeon. They stopped in front of a small goblin holding a backpack on the eighth floor. An irregular, perhaps, everyone thought. H.E.E., shouted the goblin in response to the group. Then after a few seconds of silence, the group exploded with laughter, thinking that the goblin had stolen a backpack from an adventurer after killing him. Ha 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 ha. What a funny monster, one of them shouted. It's true ha ha ha. This day couldn't get any better, said the half-beast leader. Reekling. What did I tell you about talking to strangers? Suddenly, they heard a new voice behind the goblin. H-E-E, protested the small goblin. No one laughed anymore, finding this interaction between this person and the strange monster very strange. Come here, stand behind me. He said, and it was amazing that the monster actually did as asked, going behind the shadow approaching the group. The man became more visible after taking a few more steps, and his appearance was revealed. He was tall and wore expensive and bizarre clothing, no one we knew, but he had a strange tattoo on his forehead. Hello, gentlemen. I was starting to worry if I was in the right place since you wouldn't show up while I waited for you to arrive. He said with a bored voice. Who are you? One of the men in our group asked, a bit cautious. I am Lucius Draconar, from the Hestia family. Also known as the Mage King, he said proudly, but he seemed more like a man deliriously self-proclaimed than an adventurer earning a nickname in Donatus. And we would know if someone had the title King in the middle of their nickname. Mage King? I've never heard of you. I said. Anyway, that doesn't matter much, he said with boredom, wanting to end the subject after that proud expression with his nickname. What does matter, actually, is that you stole a member of my family. 
He said calmly, it didn't take long for us to realize he must be a member of the family of that boy the foolish Palam stole from. We did so what? What are you going to do, kill us? Ha 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 ha, a many of us laughed at that, he was just one against eight of us. He must be out of his mind if he joined as he self-proclaimed as the mage king. But then, he gave a strange smile to us, it looked like a wicked and malicious smile, just like the ones we make with our victims. Hm. Since that's the case, I'll do it, with pleasure. He said, raising his hands, two fireballs appeared out of nowhere, and without a word, even from his mouth. With that, he initiated a situation we never imagined, then our desperation began. Bell POV. Nearby. I started to carry Lily on my back as we returned to the surface. The girl still cursed at me, calling me a fool, but I didn't care, I wanted to help her. Now my priority is to get the knife back, which was stolen from Lily's hands. Running through the corridors, trying to follow the trail of those thieves, we began to hear explosions in the distance, so I knew it could be them. As we approached, we heard desperate screams of humans, something that made me tremble a bit, there were people dying like animals in those corridors, but still, I gathered all my courage. We entered a more open passage, and then I came across a horrible scene that appeared before us. We saw a bunch of burned adventurer corpses scattered everywhere, this made both me and Lily, who was looking over my shoulder, freeze. You finally arrived, Belle. A familiar voice resonated in the midst of that chaos of fire and bodies, there were eight of them, unrecognizable at that moment. At the origin of the voice, there was Lucius standing calmly next to a goblin that reminded me of a support with that giant backpack. Mr. Lucius? What happened here? I asked, scared. It was a horrible sight, something I never imagined seeing in my life. They stole from my family when I politely asked them to return your knife, they attacked me unjustly. Well, I defended myself from there, he said melancholically and with a tone of irony. I shivered as he killed these people without any remorse in his voice. He. My attention was taken by the voice of the strange monster next to him, who didn't seem hostile to Lucius. His scream seemed like a protest that he didn't agree with Lucius's words. I found the monster very peculiar, but I couldn't forget about the corpses. Really? And how did you help? Lucius crossed his arms as he looked at the shorter companion. He? He? The monster protested. I don't think you distracted them, Reekling, but I'll teach you to fight in the future, don't worry. Lucius proclaimed. Well, anyway, I got it, here's your knife. Before I could see even more of the bizarre situation. He walked up to me, talking and handing me the knife, Lily trembled on my back as he approached. I may be quite unsettled by how Lucius eliminated all these people, but I know he wouldn't harm me. But I was surprised when he lifted my lost knife and handed it to me. So, I'm going back to the intermediate floors, see you later, Bell. He said calmly, walking past both of us, and a goblin in a backpack following him. As he walked away, Lily and I could only stand paralyzed in the place with the smell of burnt flesh in the air, trying to understand everything that happened in the last five minutes. Chapter 20, Entering the Intermediate Floors Lucius POV Dungeon, 11th floor Strength Boost Spell Speed Boost Spell I cast the body strengthening spells and, with my sword unsheathed, attacked a group of five orcs. However, I quickly realized how challenging it was to face them in the next few seconds. Firstly, I wasn't at the appropriate level and stats for these floors. Nevertheless, I confronted them, seeing it as a great way to improve my skills here. Stepping back, I skillfully avoided a club coming my way, cut the leg of the next one about to attack me, which destabilized him, and gave me a chance to create some distance. I focused on the one closest to facing alone, without his friends throwing their weapons at me in the few seconds before they caught up. Colliding with the club, I dodged it without a direct attack, as I had less strength than my opponent. I used my agility to my advantage, changing the trajectory of the club with the angle it rebounded from the sword. I saw an opening and separated his head from his body while evading the other enraged orcs. However, one hit me with his weapon in my arm with a horizontal swing, throwing me a few meters. Despite the pain, I quickly got up, I couldn't endure many more blows like that but I could still move my arm for now. One of them limped after I cut his leg so I had three to face. I need the spell that enhances my weapon's penetration, it could handle these greenish brutes much more easily by cutting through their clubs, I thought as I returned to the fight after taking a few seconds to breathe. With three catching up faster, I skillfully dodged their attacks and cut the leg of another, as their vital points were out of reach. Stepping back a bit to face fewer of them while two now limped. 
While the two attacked again, I threw myself at them, realizing I could handle both. After dodging, I stabbed the sword into one's neck, feeling the impact of that wooden mace next to me, almost catching me. Still, I took advantage of that moment to cut the second one's neck. Running towards the limping one closest, I dealt with him quickly, just like the last one who had been trying to catch up the entire time since I cut his leg. H.E., a reekling appeared behind me, collecting the stones. I know, it's still challenging. I hope, at least, for some improvement by the end of the day. I lamented because fighting with two orcs is easy, but with larger groups, it becomes difficult and time-consuming not to use magic in the middle of the fight. Get a healing potion from the backpack, I told him. He he replied, rummaging through the backpack and finding the vial of red liquid I had left with him when I summoned him. Handing me the vial, I drank it without hesitation, and my wounds and pain began to improve. I can keep going like this, but it's a bit costly, having to use a potion at the end of every fight, I said to myself and continued the path. The lesser healing spell could help me with that, so I'll need some time to gather another 100,000 points. I reasoned. Heavy footsteps! My thoughts were interrupted when I heard a loud thud in the form of footsteps ahead, and a grand silhouette emerged in the mist. Heavy footsteps! Heavy footsteps! Heavy footsteps! Damn, that's an infant dragon! I said even before that silhouette gained color at 50 meters, and I could see one of those for the first time. It was a monster from these floors, but even so, it's hard to find. Even in my old raids, I never witnessed one. Rower. As soon as it spotted me and Reekling, whom all dungeon monsters equally wanted to kill, regardless of my new support's resemblance to them, the infant dragon roared in anger and started running. I quickly sheathed my weapon, I had an advantage with distance and raised my hands. With my initial shots hitting it, it seemed to get irritated and came at me with hatred. I steadied myself while entering my firebolt machine gun mode. The explosions continued as the wounded monster ran, and I was somewhat surprised that it didn't seem to be so affected by my magic. This made me a bit nervous, but after 30 hits, it gave in and fell dead on the ground, beginning to disintegrate. However, it stopped just 10 meters from us. I have to be very careful with these larger monsters, despite being slower, they are more resistant. The infant dragon, in particular, has natural fire resistance. Unfortunately, I don't have a charging skill like Bell's Argonaut, I muttered to myself. Well, I have to be careful, if larger monsters like these get close enough, things can turn ugly on my side. I continued the path to the twelfth floor, taking some breaks here, resting a bit, as healing potions don't fully heal you and don't cure physical fatigue. Fighting and struggling with the same difficulty, besides orcs, I encountered a black wyvern on this floor and finally reached the thirteenth floor. We finally reached the floors where level two adventurers do their raids. What's this? I was ready to celebrate my new record when I noticed something with the open system. Clicking on quests, I saw. Intermediate boss quest. Defeat Goliath alone on the 17th floor. Progress, 0 1, 0% reward, 100,000 points. With a pleasant surprise, it's the first time a quest appears that isn't about spells, probably the system is encouraging me to seek challenges and wants to reward me for it, which is great if this happens with all the bosses I can find in the dungeon. Although, if I stop to think, the points earned aren't that great because it's not difficult to reach these numbers in a few days on easier floors. Still, it's a number that would be very welcome. Leaving the quest aside because I'm not worried about it right now, I walk to face the monsters on this floor. Facing Crystal Mantis, Lamia Mormos, Dungeon Worm, Liger Fang, a representation of Bell as a monster, Almirage, I had to resort to using magic and even then, they were quite resistant, requiring 3 to 5 firebolts to deal with them, even with SSS statistics. In the end, I reached the stairs to the 14th floor, but I refused to go ahead because I saw that I was somewhat injured from my battles when trying to combine sword and magic simultaneously. My potions were starting to run out, so I decided to go back to the orcs, where I feel I can improve my physical stats better than anywhere else. On the way back, I encountered some adventurers in a group. I couldn't help but notice their gaze at me alone here, but it didn't compare to how they looked strangely and stunned at the goblin that became my support. He was using my backpack with the crystals, accumulating more and more after each fight and obediently following me, obeying any order. Their looks hinted at people who would nickname me something very strange, which gave me a chill because my nickname box had the icon on the side plus, indicating that there were others since last week, but I didn't have the courage to open them because I know I'll want to explode someone. Unknown POV 13th floor Hey? What's this? 
said my companion's voice as we were cutting some black wyverns. Looking to where she was pointing, we saw an adventurer with a pulan following him while he fought orcs with a sword. What's the matter? It might be difficult to get here alone when you're low level, but he doesn't seem to be a level above, and he has money, although that nice cloak is already quite worn out, I said, wondering why my companion finds it so strange for someone to come here alone to hunt. It's not that, look at that support. She said frustrated, and we all looked more closely at the small pelum with the large backpack. That skin color, isn't it somewhat green? Said the dwarf in our group. That made me think of something unbelievable. Is that a goblin? I said surprised. Yes, I've never heard of a tamed goblin, but it must be from the Ganesh family. The archer in our group said and I agreed. Even though I never heard of a member of their family putting a goblin to work as support. Criminal. Muttered my companion with the first voice. How is that a crime? I asked incredulously. Look how cute he is. We should kill this adventurer for enslaving the little goblin. She said angrily. That's a goblin, Karina. We kill them all the time. I said still trying to understand the logic of my partner, who seemed enchanted by that backpack monster. Women. Said the dwarf, and I had to agree because not only Karina, two other women in our group seemed to like that green monster. Lucius POV. Sometime later. Eleventh floor. When I felt quite satisfied with my experience today, I started to head straight back to the surface. As I continued on the path, I didn't bother to hide my goblin with its large bag of magic stones. Although it was midnight, I don't need to be surprised by all the looks of the few adventurers who were in the hall at this time. Lucius? I heard a voice calling me as soon as I entered the place. Hey Ed. How are you? Didn't see you that day after I left the dungeon, I said with a smile to an acquaintance. True, I even thought you might have died. But now's not the time for that. Can you tell me, why is there a monster with a spear and a backpack following you? He exclaimed in the last part. Well, I became a tamer, didn't you know? I said, lying to a certain extent. I consider myself a tamer now, even though I summoned this goblin. You? He said suspiciously, as he knows my history, and I'm sure he would call me a liar if I said I reached the thirteenth floor today. What can I say, after leaving my old family, my talents started to emerge. I said smiling. You left that family? When? He said surprised. About fifteen days ago. But anyway, can you let me go? I asked. TSK. I'll trust you, but I want a paper signed by the guild next time. If that monster attacks someone, I lose my job. He said. He. Protested Reekling beside me, speaking for the first time. See? This little guy disagrees with you, Ed. He knows how to behave, I said and bid farewell to the old acquaintance. While walking through the city, many bars were still open, but I continued my way to the slums. The looks didn't stop when people recognized Reekling as a monster, but due to him behaving next to me, they assumed I was an adventurer with a taming skill. But I didn't like the hateful looks from the women passing by me, wondering why they were looking at me like that. It can't be because of this ugly thing next to me, can it? I murmured. He. Arriving at the church, unsurprisingly, everyone was sleeping when I entered. I asked Reekling to sleep on the couch because Hestia had dragged the poor boy to her bed after what happened today. I need to buy a bed, otherwise, my old age will be based on back pain medication. I complained as I sat on my usual spot against the wall to sleep. Reekling and I slept peacefully. When I woke up in the morning I opened my eyes because Hestia was shouting at me. Luseiskun. She woke me up with her scandalous scream, which made me close my ears instantly. H.M.? What's up? I said drowsily. What's up? We have a monster sleeping on the couch. She argued, pointing to the goblin who was now sitting, looking at me submissively, making a little, he'd sound. What did Hestia do to him while I was sleeping? I wondered. On the other side of the room, there were Belle and Lily looking at the situation, having arrived at the church in the morning. Lily would probably officially join the Hestia family today, but still not with the Falna. She had fearful looks towards me. I don't blame her, but did her gaze become cute for the goblin? What the hell? He's not a monster. He's my new partner, right, Reekling? I exclaimed and asked for confirmation from my goblin. He. My partner responded, transitioning from his submissive state to a more cheerful one. 
Next to the couch on the floor was a backpack with magic stones. See? The women seemed to love him. I asked with a smile. She looked strange at this, but I just laughed. But I sighed as I had to explain how Reekling became my companion through a summoning spell. A summoning spell? She shouted when she heard that. How incredible, Mr. Lucius! How? Magic shouldn't be so easily acquired, and you already had Bell's magic. Hestia shouted. Eh? Mr. Lucius has the same magic as me? Bell shouted upon discovering this. Hestia can explain that to you, and by the way, I now have five spells. I'm not limited to the three magic slots like most adventurers, I said without revealing that I can buy spells. Hestia fainted after hearing this, Bell froze, knowing how difficult it is to get magic, but I have five now. Lily was lost knowing that I openly talked about big secrets, but I didn't care, she was now quite trustworthy. Reekling stayed quiet, not understanding much of what was happening. Chapter 21 Lily Joins the Family Lucius POV Abandoned Church I have nothing against you, I began, staring at Lily as Hestia, Belle, and Reekling listened. But I know you tried to hinder me. If it were someone else, they might be dead, and you would be indirectly responsible. I would consider you a murderer, just like the situation with Bell. I won't treat you as my best friend after everything that happened. I will trust Bell's judgment and consider you a member of this family. Sometimes, I believe in second chances, but… I looked into her eyes as she shrank back. Hestia and Bell had horrified looks at my next words. But if you betray or put any member of this family in danger again, I will kill you personally. My voice didn't carry anger, hatred, sadness, or any emotion, it was just indifference. My voice conveyed how sure I was that I would do exactly what I was saying, emanating a coldness that made the people around shiver, even Reekling looked at me cautiously. I understand, Lord Lucius. She said softly. Hee hee. Why are you threatening to kill people here? Hestia shouted. I'm telling the truth. If she wants to be part of this family, she'll at least have to have common sense. Otherwise, why let her in to begin with? I said. But Lord Lucius. Bell was about to protest. Bell, you're too naive. Being a hero is not just being nice to everyone. You have to be smart and know who you're dealing with. I told him and he shrunk a bit at my words. I think it's very nice that you're a hero, Bell, believe me. But you have to see the world as it is, not just as you want it to be. One day, you'll lose your life like this, and no matter what kind of life you had, death is the end. I said, and Hestia was going to protest, talking about the other world where souls go, but I interrupted her. You get what I mean? And I'm not saying this just because of your insistence on saving her, but she has to understand that you'll have to rely on your back for her. From now on, you'll be together in the dungeon, and at any moment, it could be the end if someone falters for a moment. You'll depend on each other as much as she depends on you. I said and everyone fell silent, absorbing a bit of what I said. If Lily is going to join the family, they must trust each other from now on, without leaving any loose ends. I wanted to teach Bella a lesson in naivety. I know you had a hard life, Lily, and I can understand some of your actions. But I will trust Belle and Hestia's decision. I just ask that you be loyal to them. If you accept to join this family, I'm sure Belle and even I could help you when needed, even if we have to face the entire Soma family. I said in a serious tone. Hestia was amazed at the audacity regarding another family, but I shrugged, waiting for Lily's response. I? I want to be part of this family. I promise never to betray you again, promise always to help. I don't want to go back to that life, I'm sorry, I will never betray you again. I don't want to leave. Lily began to cry with her last words. No one could speak as Lily cried and apologized sincerely. Did she hear when I said we would destroy the Soma family? I wondered, imagining a reaction to that statement. I was the first to break the silence as Lily cried. I smiled at her and said. No need to cry anymore. I will trust you. Anyway, welcome, since Hestia accepted you into the family. So, you've become a valuable ally, and we're here to help each other in times of need. I turned 180 degrees with my mood, leaving everyone stunned. I really said what I said, but there's no need to keep that mood all the time, is there? After all, Lily is important to the Hestia family throughout the story. She is quite intelligent, often rivaling Finn, with the potential to surpass him. Not to mention that she may be the reincarnation of Fianna, the legendary knight, so she has much more potential than it seems. Now, why don't we eat something? 
I said again to change the subject while Belle helped Lily recover. Y. Yes. Hestia stammered but accepted my escape to end the matter. Today, I will buy a bed, I'm tired of that wall. I said. He. Well, two beds. One for my green partner here, too. He. That and another for Lily. I said with a smile and Hestia started laughing at this interaction. Author's note, I'm going to open the nickname screen, if you don't like it, you can skip, it's not crucial to the story, but I like to keep it as a reminder of some events in the story. I sat in a corner of the church while Belle and Lily prepared for a dive into the dungeon. I'm going to open Pandora's box here. I said as I opened the system with Reekling by my side. Nicknames, plus. Clicking on the box, a new screen opened outside the status, as the list was too long for the status screen to handle alone. Loser slash useless family member slash dungeon beggar slash milf slayer slash bastard taking advantage of beautiful goddesses slash foe of the Hephaestus family slash mana monster, new, slash evil demon, new, slash enemy of the Loki family, new, slash interesting stranger, new, slash shameless boy, new, slash Oreo drunkard, new, slash vagabond, new, slash prostitute lover, new, slash story contact lord, new. Slash unknown bedmate, new, slash ungrateful son, new, slash dungeon addict, new, slash bizarrely powerful, new, slash weirdo with strange cloak, new, slash square pervert, new, slash narcissist, new, slash assassin, new, slash monster, new. Slash goblin slave trader, new, slash enemy of women who love cute animals, new, slash cruel, new. I knew I'd regret opening this, I murmured. From what I'm seeing, those I hadn't seen before have the new icon next to them. Mana Monster, new nicknamed by those adventurers from the Soma family. Evil Demon, new nicknamed by the same adventurers after showing no mercy. Enemy of the Loki family, knew this event was when I went to the hostess of fertility and offended Bet. It seems he made me an enemy of his family as well. Interesting Stranger, knew who nicknamed this? Was it Loki? Shameless Boy, knew this was due to my lines in the hostess of fertility, some adventurer who overheard, perhaps. Oreo Drunkard, knew so many people saw this, I can't say who it was. Vagabond, knew damn, I was just drunk. Prostitute Lover, knew I never slept with one to begin with, who was the idiot? Going to a brothel to find a prostitute doesn't mean you're going to sleep with her, does it? Story Contact Lord, knew finally, a suitable nickname among so many misfortunes, thanks, Haroheim. Unknown Bedmate, knew Ishtar for sure, even though I don't remember how I ended up in her bed while being with Haroheim a little before. Ungrateful son, new Hestia, due to my disappearance and lack of contact. Dungeon addict, new Hestia, not surprisingly. Bizarrely powerful, new Hestia strikes again, thanks to my status. Weirdo with strange cloak, new my cloak is cool. Who dares to disagree? Square pervert, new damn, that's too much. Narcissist, new I have to agree. Assassin, new you stole my family member, and you want me to give you a candy for it? Monster, new I'm ruthless, I admit. Goblin slave trader, new here we go again. Enemy of women who love cute animals, new what is this? Damn Reekling, you're making my life difficult here. I couldn't help but comment. He. Cruel, new. So, I'm cruel, Hestia? I shouted to her, and she shrugged, admitting it was her, as I tried to educate Lily and Belle. Man, all of this happened in two weeks, I wonder what this list will be like in the future. I couldn't help but lament. It didn't take long for me to leave the church. Thinking about my next steps, I couldn't help but think that everything happened according to the original story, except for the fact that there were eight adventurers instead of the original three who could escape, as I didn't think Bell had a chance against them. I believe they somehow found out about the disappearance of those fools from the Soma family, who tried to ambush me and became more cautious, changing their strategies. But now I'm not worried about these small differences in the original story with my presence. I just can't change too many things because that would alter my knowledge of the future to where I read in the books and saw in the anime, which takes my knowledge of the story until Bell makes his first raid on the deeper floors and ends up on the 36th floor with Ryo Lion. Not that I'm afraid of changing the story, but I'm confident that I can get stronger without worrying about my life or the lives of my companions for now, and I care about Hestia and the others now. I may be a narcissist and idiot many times, but I'm loyal to mine, that's how I became part of them, it happened since I accepted Hestia's Falna. I know she has many questions about me, my strange rapid evolution, and the ability to acquire spells, but she remains silent without pressing too much regarding our formed contract. Walking through the streets, I didn't bother hiding my goblin by my side. 
who also walked peacefully by my side with just his backpack, I told him to leave his spear at the church. Hey, hey, that's a monster. I heard voices whispering from civilians and adventurers as they stared at me early this morning. He's a tamer, it's possible. But I've never heard of a tamed goblin, another voice said. How cute. I heard other women exclaim. Cute. That's a goblin. He's ugly, not cute. I exclaimed internally. I began to notice that Reekling had an effect on women, beyond that darn nickname. I hope this doesn't bring more problems for me. I thought as I looked at my partner, who looked at me with confusion as I turned my head toward him. He? He said, bewildered, feeling my gaze on him. I turned to look ahead, ending my thoughts about Reekling, and continued walking without giving him a response since he seemed so oblivious to his surroundings. Lucius had no idea he was becoming an enemy of the female gender at this exact moment. Arriving at the guild, as we took our first steps inside, many people drew their swords when they saw me with Reekling. Most of them were level 1, already terrified of monsters from the early floors, and goblins were one of them, what I could call a natural reaction. He? This alerted Reekling. Hey H.U.I., can we calm down a bit? Can't you see him with a backpack? He's my partner, and his name is Reekling, so I would appreciate it if you weren't so hostile and lowered your weapons. I shouted, enraged and ready to defend my support. I would burn anyone who attacked us here. Lucius? Set arose at one of the counters, drawing everyone's attention. All who saw this calmed down a bit, seeing that I'm known to one of the staff, even if she's the most unfriendly one. Hello, Rose. I came to register as a tamer. I said, gaining her surprised look, but seeing the goblin accompanying me without being hostile to anyone, she shouldn't be. Why am I still surprised every time you enter this place after you left your old family? You're giving me more headaches in two weeks than in the last two years. She smiled, and it was something that surprised everyone who was watching. Rose was an ice wall to everyone, seeing her speak spontaneously and smiling at someone was unprecedented for them. So, I took Reekling to the counter where, unsurprisingly, she found him cute and threatened me in case I was tough on my partner. I nervously laughed at that. She never threatened me before. I thought. After everyone calmed down and I filled in new information for both myself and Reekling, explaining that it was due to a low-level spell, I had to address another matter as well and Rose would help me with that. Rose, can you give me the address of the Takamikazuchi family? I asked with the intention of seeking a little help from that family. Chapter 22 Issues with A's Slash Mikoto Lucius POV Guild Here it is. Rose handed me the paper with the address and I thanked her deeply. But not before also asking for Demeter's address, which I had always wanted from Hestia, and she always denied. Rose squinted, wondering why I wanted the address of a goddess, but I just smiled, saying I had a message from Hestia to Demeter. I left after she handed me the information. As I was leaving through the large doors, I noticed A's on the street. When she saw me, she automatically drew her sword in a quick movement, not because of me or the nickname I gained as an enemy of her family, but because of Reekling, who was by my side. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Are you thinking of attacking my partner, huh? I said, raising an eyebrow. Monster. She muttered without lowering her sword. Many people tensed up at this moment in front of the guild, but I was angry, and Reekling was afraid, as Aze was level 6 at this moment and could intimidate anyone, even I could feel the pressure that I was no challenge in front of her when angry. Don't even think about it, do you see this? I took out a paper and showed it to her, even though we had stayed at a certain distance from each other. I know you have your issues with monsters, but Reekling is a tamed monster. If you want to kill them, go to the dungeon. I said angrily, and by now, the commotion had already affected the entire guild. Because who wouldn't recognize the sword princess in Orio? But to my horror and Reekling's, she didn't care about it and advanced. Reekling lost his head in the next second. Silence settled in for a few moments until the sound of flames appeared. Asterisk flames asterisk asterisk boom 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 asterisk. Aze was quick to dodge my attacks easily as I bombarded her in front of the guild, to the horror of all the witnesses. Never in their lives did they imagine that today, one of the great names in this city would attack a goblin in the middle of the street, and another unknown adventurer would be casting spells on the level 6 adventurer. I didn't cast many spells, just enough to make her back off, even though I was already drawing attention as I cast these fire spells so quickly. I didn't want to be too conspicuous. Why did you attack him? I shouted. 
She didn't answer, still waiting for my second attack. She probably didn't even understand why I was defending the goblin. Looking at his body beside me, the body and backpack disappeared with a light, catching the attention of the crowd, as it should disintegrate with a magic stone left behind. If you really want to attack, then bring it on. I shouted angrily. Invocation spell, goblin. A magic circle appeared on the ground in front of me. And a goblin emerged from it to the size of the witnesses, trying to understand how someone could resurrect the goblin again. But in reality, it's an invocation, and no matter how many times it's destroyed, it can be restored with all memories and attack him in front of me without harming anyone irritated me a lot. Here. Reekling protested when he appeared. And now? Are you going to kill him again? I shouted frustrated and mocking the level 6 adventurer. She looked stunned for the first time, I had no chance against her, but was I going to lower my head? Of course not, even if I have my bones broken, I will face this without regret. What is happening here? A new voice was heard from the guild entrance. A fat elf was at the entrance, surrounded by many employees, rose among them with a worried look. I'm being attacked here. I'm inviting her to attack my licensed goblin again, I can summon him all day. I said without taking my eyes off A's, I really felt angry at the irrational woman. He. Reekling didn't like that. Stop this madness here. He said threatening both me and A's. Tisk, I'll make you pay for this someday, A's. I said to myself as I looked at her with cold eyes. Let's go, Reekling, let's get out of here. I said taking my eyes off A's while my goblin followed me. I didn't even need to talk to that elf because I knew I had the goblin's documentation with Rose, while Ace herself was looking complicated after witnessing my goblin come back to life. Wait, about Belle. She tried to say, but I gave her a stern look at that moment. Is she serious about wanting to talk to me after what she did? I got annoyed at this thought. Do you still want to talk to me and know about my family member after everything? Go ask your advisor over there. I pointed to where the guild staff were, who had come out to see the origin of the commotion. Inatul is her name. Now, I'm not in the mood to talk to you. Goodbye. I said, distancing myself with coldness. Today would be the day she would meet Bell and start training him, but I didn't want to see her face anymore. Without wasting any more time and in a bad mood, I passed through the crowd that was still stunned by what happened. A bit further away, I checked Reekling's backpack, it seemed that everything in it before his death reappeared, to my relief. I'm sorry for this, Reekling. I never thought that woman would attack you like that. I said to my companion. He. I took Reekling with me to the east side of the city, where there was a part of oriental culture. Passing by various sushi restaurants and blacksmith workshops, I found a classic Japanese mansion, this was the location Rose had given me. Author's note. This part of the city I mentioned is a location I'm creating here, it's not canonical. Another thing, I had A's attack Reekling, I believe it makes more sense if she encountered some monster in the city. Knowing A's and her unconditional resentment for monsters, I know she hates dragons above all, but I don't think she wouldn't attack a goblin if she saw it in the streets of Orio. I believe it makes much more sense for this attack to happen if she saw Reekling. And of course, Lucius would attack A's, first and foremost, my character is a chaos creator. I never liked fanfics where the MC is friends with everyone, there have to be tensions and disputes, which is not difficult with his personality. At the gate, I noticed a small bell on the side and shook it to ring. I didn't have to wait long because one minute later, a man with a serene look and black hair tied on the sides came out of the mansion through the main entrance, he was dressed in classic oriental clothing. He looked at me surprised not to know me, but that probably increased his curiosity with my visit. I knew who this man was since he is identical to the character from the anime. What I found strange is that the god himself came to greet me at the gate, even though it's a small family, it's still strange for a god to do this personally. Hello, Mr. Adventurer, may I help you? He said, calling me an adventurer, as he could sense my fauna. Gods can sense that, Hestia invited me to her family at the time because, even though I had exalesia in my body, I didn't have fauna at the time. Hello, God Takamikazuchi, sorry for the visit, in case I'm disrupting any of your business, but I would like to ask you a favor. I said sincerely. He was a good God, so I had to be respectful to him, I treat people as they treat me, this is my universal law. And what would that be? He opened the gate to talk. My name is Lucius Draconar, I'm a level 1 member of the Hestia family, but I'm not here on behalf of my goddess. I came on my own because I need sword training and would like to know if I can learn the oriental style with the katana, which your family masters. 
I said sincerely. Hmm, let's go in and have tea to talk. He said calmly, but he noticed the small monster by my side, hoping it wouldn't mimic A's, I introduced him quickly. Ah, this is Reekling. Don't worry, he is tamed and quite polite. Isn't that right, Reekling? I said, a little embarrassed for not having introduced my partner before. He. My support confirmed my words. He accepted my explanation, seeing that the goblin behaved well. We entered the place right behind him, but I was thinking. I doubt he would agree to talk to anyone who asked for sword training in the oriental fencing. As rare as that might happen, because I'm from the Hestia family, he gave me a chance to state my reasons. I thought to myself. We sat in a place that reminded me of a dojo, after entering a room, there were many katanas hanging on the wall. I was fascinated while he waited for me to examine the details of the blades. So, Mr. Lucius, I wonder why your interest here and in the oriental fighting style? He asked calmly while picking up the tea that an oriental woman brought to the small table in front of us. I had to get used to sitting with my knees on the tatame while imitating the god in front of me with reekling by my side, but he simply sat with his buttocks on the floor. Hiding my smile a bit with my companion and his lack of etiquette, which I didn't mind, he had just died some time ago, it wouldn't be fair for me to criticize him at this moment. I looked at the god Takamikazuchi, he wanted my reasons for why I came here specifically. I could try elsewhere, Ace would never be an option after today. I can't imagine talking to her again. But honestly, I'm more inclined towards the oriental style, something that most swordsmen here don't master, and I've always liked the katana more, I identify it as my personal style. I always had the idea that, because the sword is curved in the shape of a katana, it can be faster and more agile than a classic medieval one. Maybe I'm wrong, but it won't make me like the samurai style any less. I am a mage, god Takamikazuchi, and I am more powerful than anyone else in that department at level 01. However, I still have physical weaknesses and don't know any fighting style, besides swinging the sword and a two-year experience in the dungeon on upper floors. I sat inside before continuing. However, I need to improve this physical aspect, increasing my prowess with more sword fights than spells, and I identify with the oriental style. I know that this is my fighting style. I concluded my answer. Hmm, interesting. I can do that for you, but can you do something for me in the future? Since you're not on behalf of Hestia, I'll ask directly of you. He pondered on what I said but showed no surprise at my statements. In the end, he accepted my reasons and was willing for a small price, one favor for another favor, fair enough for me. I accept, God Takamikazuchi. I will do everything within my means to repay this great help. I said sincerely. As I said, I treat people as they treat me. Great, then let's introduce you to your new teacher. He said, getting up from the tatame while I followed. We passed by some other members of his family who didn't appear in the anime. From what I understood, they were more focused on their oriental businesses than going to the dungeon. My goblin didn't cause a commotion this time, as I was walking with his god without him caring about Reekling's presence. We reached the back of the house, and I began to hear the sounds of wood hitting and someone making small sounds with their mouth gha ha ha rhythmically. When I saw the small courtyard behind the mansion, I saw a classic view of a Japanese backyard in a clan. There was a stream with a waterfall and bamboo that went up and down as its content filled with water, with a medium-sized lake just below, with many koi carp. There were bamboo shoots as well, like a mini forest. In addition to the magnificent view of the environment, there was a girl in a kimono outfit, training on a wooden dummy. She was hitting it very accurately with her movements and was controlling her breath with each strike with the bamboo stick. After each strike, she let out the geiche that I heard before arriving. This girl is Yamato Mikoto. She is extremely beautiful like Rose, she has always been one of the top five women I found most beautiful in anime. I can say that if I were to create a harem in this world, Riviera, Rose, Mikoto, Haroheim, and Hestia would be among my choices as my favorite characters. However, I am a man of one woman only who wants to avoid a headache from dealing with a variety of women in a relationship. Not to mention that Mikoto is in love with Takamikazuchi, so for me, just her friendship is enough. Mikoto, seeing us approaching, stopped hitting her opponent, and she looked at me trying to recognize me, but her god took her out of her thoughts. Mikoto Kuen, this man is Lucius Draconar. He is a mage from my friend and colleague Hestia, he has physical deficiencies as a mage and wants to learn our oriental style. I would like you to teach him. He said calmly. Mikoto analyzed me for a moment, thinking if I should learn from her or not. She must be thinking of some condition. 
but fortunately, she nodded as soon as she saw Reekling making the word acute escape from her lips. Reekling can be a great blessing sometimes. I exclaimed internally. I can teach, however, you must call me sensei. She said in silence while staring at the goblin. Eh? Is that your big condition? I let slip. I was hoping she would call me Lucius Dano, but I won't die if I call her Mikoto Sensei. Chapter 23 Lightning Katana Style Lucius POV Headquarters of the Takamikazuchi family. If I were in a fanfic, people would be asking me why I should be satisfied with a character like Mikoto training me? She's a level 1 adventurer, after all. I thought to myself as I observed the woman in front of me. Despite the stats boosting her strength and speed by leaps and bounds of adventurers, they won't give her automatic fighting techniques. You might be a level 2 who's only used to killing monsters by swinging an axe and end up losing to a level 1 swordmaster, even with a slight advantage in stats. The sword princess is not known for just reaching level 6, that happened a few days ago, she's known for being highly skilled in her sword style as her nickname suggests. Mikoto began teaching me as soon as I put on a kimono, another odd condition of hers. There was no secret, it was grab the bamboo and start cutting through the air rhythmically. Lucius, improve your posture. She shouted at me. I'm facing a big problem here, I fought for years without a fencing style, my muscle memory is concentrated on how I'm used to fighting, making it even more challenging to relearn and fight again, so I'm constantly reprimanded by Mikoto. Yes, Mikoto-senpai. I said, trying to focus. He he he. I heard the little voice of my small goblin. Are you laughing at me, little devil? I wondered frustrated, it's the first time he sees me so submissive and in such an embarrassing situation, besides, this little devil was comfortable in Takamikazuchi's lap, watching us in the courtyard. After spending the whole morning trying to maintain a new posture, by the afternoon, I started practicing sword strikes with my teacher. Keep your breathing controlled, Lucius. Mikoto warned me on the side. It was very hard for me, but I wouldn't give up. With each sword strike, I tried to synchronize my breathing even though I'm still quite lost. I kept at it, performing various movements that Mikoto showed me until mid-afternoon, where we were going to start a little spar, or it was supposed to be. Because I took a beating with that bamboo. I left Takamikazuchi's mansion limping on that day, my eyes were purple, and I cursed for not bringing healing potions with me. We ended up agreeing on my training like this, Mikoto would teach me every morning and I would go to the dungeon in the afternoon and evening to train my new style alone. I also exchanged my sword for a katana because Hestia's shops didn't have that type of weapon, not accessible for a poor man like me at the moment. However, there were blacksmiths in this eastern district, so I picked one up at a weapon shop. I arrived at the church and started listening to sermons that Hestia was giving Bell for going out with A's for training. I didn't pay much attention and went to wait for some men to bring the three beds I ordered in the morning. With the beds finally installed, I went to greet my family, finally. Hey! I heard you fought with A's. Bell finally said, he was holding back while the beds were being installed. Well, that woman attacked Reekling, I didn't hold back with her when I got angry. I said. She talked about it, she seemed to regret it. Bell tried to justify her, and I just nodded. Hestia stayed silent while listening. Well, if Reekling weren't a summon, he'd be dead. That crazy girl attacked him, even with a tamed monster record. I protested. It was a complicated situation, on one side, Bell had the person he admired the most, on the other, there was the goblin he met that same day, even though it was a summon. Well, anyway, this fight is between me and her, don't stress about it, you have nothing to do with it, and I won't judge you for your friendship with her. I reassured him. I know, but... He started. As you can see, life is more complicated than it seems, Bell. Sometimes there's no right or wrong side, just two sides wanting to be right on top of each other, it doesn't apply in this case, but A's attacked a teammate, monster or not, I can't forgive that easily. I said. Lucius is right, Bell. I'm sure he and his new friend can come to an agreement, but don't let it affect the relationship between you two. Hestia tried to appease, even though she naturally didn't like A's. After that, we returned to our normalcy, Lily had also arrived. I handed over the crystals I hadn't exchanged yet to Hestia to do it the next day and went to sleep with a little less pain after taking a potion. The next day, I set out with my goblin to train with Mikoto and went to the dungeon to fight. I still took a beating from Mikoto, no surprise, but at least I would train this style in the dungeon after taking some potions I bought. I went to Mayaka's pharmacy to buy more potions. 
I know his potions aren't of the highest quality, and the prices are quite exaggerated in that store, but he's another kind god and a friend of Hestia. I owed him that so I bought some. Not that it bothered me either, as I make ten times more money in twelve hours than an ordinary adventurer in eight hours now. So the days kept passing and I stayed in this rhythm until I accumulated and completed 50,000 points in the system. It took me longer to earn points in the last few days because, first, I'm much slower to kill monsters with a katana than to keep shooting fireballs like AAAK-47 machine gun. Second, I'm only staying in the dungeon for six hours, as the other six are spent taking a beating from Mikoto at the beginning of the day, I mean, training with Mikoto. The only happy one in all of this is Reekling, who is always embraced by a beautiful girl like Mikoto every time I go to train. Despite his ugliness, by my standards, he is loved by women. I also visited Demeter these days. Of course, I couldn't sleep in her family, but we went to a hotel in secret. Hestia wanted satisfaction for me sleeping out that night while I left Reekling with her. My routine was satisfactory, except for the fact that I took quite a beating from Mikoto, my results were bearing fruit in my physical statistics. After days, I finally had the screen in front of me like this. System, shop, lightning spell slash lightning weapon slash rank 2, 50,000, do you want to buy this grimoire? Yes slash no, a yes g points, 50,334 minus 50,000 is equal to 334 remaining points. After reading and burning the grimoire, I cast the spell, and a new tab on the mission screen also appeared as I conjured it, but I was more interested in the spell's effect. Lightning spell, lightning weapon. When I shouted, I was holding my katana on the eleventh floor, thin blue lightning began to circulate around my sword. It was beautiful to hear those lightning bolts run through the katana, there was a spell like this at rank 3, it would probably be like Sasuke's Chidori when he cast it on his sword. He he he. I was internally laughing at this possibility, it would be a fire mage and a lightning swordsman. I started running towards the enemies, a group of four giant orcs that I spotted, and I sliced them like cheese while my goblin was picking up the magic stones. Unlike before, my sword easily cut through their clubs. My attacks were much more lethal now with these lightning circling the sword. Unfortunately, every minute I had to shout the spell since its duration is only 60 seconds and it would take quite a while to get the spell reward without chanting. Lightning Weapon Rank 2 Mission Cast 5000 Lightning Weapon Rank 2 Progress 1 slash 5000 0% Reward User can use chantless spell. My other missions were like this. Strength Booster Mission Cast 1000 Strength Booster Progress, 212-1000 a 21% Reward, user can use chantless spell Speed Booster Mission, cast 1000 Speed Booster Progress, 212-1000 a 21% Reward, user can use chantless spell Goblin Summon Mission, keep the goblin active for 100 hours Progress, 95-100 a 95% Reward, user can use chantless spell Intermediate Boss Mission Defeat Goliath alone on the 17th floor. Progress, 0 slash 1, 0 percent, reward, 100,000 points. My statistics are like this after 30 hours fighting in the dungeon in 4 days. Level, 1. Status. Strength, G248-368, 120 points slash average 4 slash HRS. Endurance, F314-434, 120 points slash average 4 slash HRS. Dexterity, G255-375, 120 points slash average 4 slash HRS. Agility, G295-415, 120 points slash average 4 slash HRS. Magic, SSS 1.302-1.452, 150 points slash average 5 slash HRS. Abilities, a blessing of? Nullifies any mana expenditure. Spells, fire spell slash firebolt slash rank 2. Ice spell slash freeze slash rank 1. Support spell slash strength booster slash rank 2. Support spell slash speed booster slash rank 2. Summoning spell slash goblin slash rank 2. Lightning spell slash lightning weapon slash rank 2. The gain in my physical statistics practically doubled after I changed my fighting style from magic to swords, they evolved like this, average per hour before and after with the sword style. Strength, 1.8-4. Endurance, 2.8-4. Dexterity, 2.1-4. Agility, 2.4-4 a magic, 13.5-5. 
Chapter 24 This shell can only be broken by those who take the risk of adventure. Lucius POV Oreo Focused on my training and stat increase, my days passed by unnoticed due to the busy schedule. I was invited several times to go to the Hostess of Fertility by Belle, Hestia, and even Lily, but I declined as I had to train and get stronger in the coming days. I evolved much faster than an ordinary adventurer, but I'm still below Belle's level, so I have to focus on getting stronger to prepare for future events. Mikoto is surprised by all my development and eagerness to learn in recent days. I am becoming much stronger in combat style and in our sparring sessions, I am starting to pose a significant challenge to her. Not only because I am improving my swordsmanship, but my statistics have already reached rank A in all attributes. She doesn't know about my status evolution and believes it's my sword techniques that are increasing, unlike Takamikazuchi, who feels my exilia increasing in the fauna every day. Obviously, he remained silent without saying anything, which I thanked him for not questioning something like that. I believe I can already make my upgrade to level 02, but I still want to reach 1,500 points in everything. I noticed that after reaching 1499 in magic, my points assigned to these statistics slowed their growth speed by half, but I still made 2.5 points per hour fighting in the dungeon. Seeing that I wouldn't catch up to Bell in my 6 hours, I started dedicating 8 hours of dungeon fights, entering at noon and leaving only at 10 pm, following this routine for 2 whole weeks. Status Strength, F368-A816 Endurance, E434-A882 Dexterity, F375-A823 Agility, E415-A863 Magic, SSS1 for 52 SSS1 755. Accumulated points, 78,780. Belle and Lily were going to the dungeon together every day, and I waited until this moment because today would be a very special day. Belle has been training with Ace for two weeks as well. She tried to talk to me about what happened during this time, but I wasn't interested. I said that attacking Reekling would be like attacking our family, so I wasn't in the mood to see her face around. But I wondered if her family knew about the incident because no one came to us. Anyway, after Belle mentioned that she cancelled training with him today because she was going on a deep dive into the dungeon with her family, I realized that today he will evolve to level 02 by facing that mutant minotaur that Otter and Freya created. I wanted to see it because it's one of the best fights I've seen in anime and the best fight in Damachi, in my opinion, I must admit, so I would never miss it. I calmly started my day more relaxed today because I asked Mikoto for a day off yesterday, and she agreed. I had breakfast with my family for the first time in two weeks, which surprised the trio a lot. Hestia, despite complaining that I didn't spend much time with them and that I never went to the dungeon with Belle, respected me and was proud because I was working hard every day, bringing magic stones, and helping Belle when he needed, like that time I retrieved his knife. I knew that in her opinion, despite causing trouble here and there like a bully, I was a good son to the family after all. After breakfast, Hestia went to the center of the favela, Belle and Lily to the dungeon, and I went to buy a new katana because mine started to crack when I picked it up in the morning. I have to change it every three days because the thunder spell ruins the metal along with its usage, which I do by cutting monsters. In the future, I should look for a specialized blacksmith to make one that's resistant with thunder immunity. After breakfast, we separated. Belle went to the dungeon with Lily, Hestia to her usual job, and I went to talk to the familiar vendor in the cultural area, an old oriental man from whom I always buy his katanas. After buying a new one, I headed to the dungeon with the intention of spying on the legendary fight. Some time after running through the dungeon, I reached the eighth floor, and I cursed myself because I realized I almost missed the fight. Belle had just risen from the ground and pushed Aze away to fight alone with the mutant minotaur, saying that this fight was his. I don't approach and stand watching the fight from the side without them seeing me, although they know I'm here. They are all high rank after all. I see that the other members of the Loki family are focused while Bell runs to face his fight without caring about me either. The dog, as always, is talking nonsense with his big mouth. Lily pleads for him to help Bell, but when he finally takes his steps towards the fight, he stops, impressed with the level 1 adventurer's battle, just like everyone else. Is he really level 01? says one of the Amazons. In Bet's eyes, he was inexperienced a month ago, right Bet, says the Palum. TSK. What happened, says the dog who was until now mocking Bell. Thread, 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 I was in my corner whistling softly, trying to make the sound of the heroic desire soundtrack while watching the fight, impressed. He looks like the Argonaut. Loved that story when I was a kid.
Freya must be having an orgasm right now, I thought, laughing, as I watched attentively. Belle continued to fight against the Minotaur very fiercely, it was really a fight worthy of an Oscar if they were filming it now. But what kind of knife is that? It's well made, but it's not just that. The kid is skilled too. He's doing really well. But he can't land an attack. It's difficult to penetrate the Minotaur's defense. Belle San. Slash. Slash. Hit. Dodge. Slash. Dodge. Firebolt. Firebolt. Fast chanting magic? Wait, this magic. That was a beautiful attack. But it wasn't enough. They're tied. Crack. Stab. Spin. The Minotaur drops the sword after Bell twists the knife in his arm with an impressive attack in the face of that stalemate. They start the fight again, and Bell picks up the sword from the ground. Stab. Dodge. Stab. He cuts the Minotaur in various places and steps back a bit while his face is stained with blood. They stare at each other for a while before starting a charge, running towards each other. Foolish! What an idiot! Bell San! It's all right. Stab. Bell manages to stop the enemy's attack where it seemed he would lose and dodges. With that, he creates an opening, thrusting the sword into the belly of the mutant monster. Firebolt, he casts the first spell, and the minotaur bleeds from the mouth as its stomach swells. Firebolt, he casts the second, making the minotaur swell with the fire expanding further inside it, but it still remains alive. Firebolt, he casts a third one that makes the upper part of the monster explode in fire like a beautiful display of overcoming. Ha 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 ha, excellent. Even though I'm used to frenetic battles, I have to admit that this was a beautiful show, I said to myself. Belsan. He did it. He fainted standing too. Mind zero. Belsan. Belsan. Riviera, what's his status? said the dog. I can't check the status without his permission. He's not in a condition to refuse. But I am. I said calmly, stepping out of the shadows of the corridor. Lord Lucius San. Lily shouted when she saw me. All the Loki family members were now looking at me. You, the arrogant weakling. The dog growled. Hey, dog, wasn't it you who was talking about not getting involved in another's fight, which was against dungeon rules? Now you want to peek at the status of another adventurer while he's unconscious? Can you believe this guy, Reekling? He shouted the little goblin who appeared by my side. Gew. Gew. So cute. While some girls liked Reekling, Riviera remained stoic, and Aze looked with complicated eyes, she seemed a bit regretful and lost. What did you say, weakling? The grumpy dog shouted. Riviera looked at me uncertain of how to proceed with this, she should know about A's attack a few weeks ago. Simple, I'm saying not to think about doing that. As a member of the Hestia family, I don't want other members studying his status. If you want to know, ask him when he wakes up, but don't do it when he's unable to refuse. I said seriously, not to bet but to her. You let your companion fight and risk his life? He almost couldn't make it. Said the blonde Palum for the first time. This shell can only be broken by those who take the risk of adventure. That's what I said to him seriously, he stared at me for a moment before Aze spoke. I'm sorry. She simply said without showing any emotion in her voice. This left her companion stunned, except for the executives, as they were more aware of the things that happened. H.Y. A's, why are you apologizing to this guy? Bet snarled furious at A's. Upon hearing that, I got angry and finally decided to speak my mind about them. Hey, let me tell you something, dog. You guys first put Bell in danger a month ago with those minotaurs from the 15th floor, then openly mock him in public, a large family from Oreo, gathering at a bar to mock an adventurer who almost died because of them. That kind of person is one of the ones I hate the most. I said with hatred to Bet. If they were enemies of Bell, I wouldn't mind so much, but they throw a level 1 into a desperate situation and still expect him to overcome the terrible situation, with Bet laughing and mocking him. Then you publicly judge me for free, so don't expect me to kiss your feet, dog. Not to mention that not long ago, another member of yours attacked me in the streets of Orio and killed my goblin here. So let me ask you something. I said already enraged, knowing that I could die if all these people wanted, but I didn't care about speaking my mind. One thing is to see them in the anime, but I'm annoyed with this family after spending this month and witnessing all their actions. 
Since when did one of the most powerful families in Oreo become a bunch of bullying thugs? I said, especially glaring at Finn. A silence took over the atmosphere in a somber mood, even Lily, standing next to an unconscious bell, tensed up at this. Looking at them, I could feel everyone stunned by my question, some were angry, Finn looked me in the eyes without wavering, Gareth sighed while Riviera closed her eyes. Tioni remained quiet but clenched her hands in anger, she's angry because I called Finn a thug, her sister beside her, Tiona, looked lost without understanding much, while Aze was stoic, but I could hear a bit of guilt in her eyes, Bet was growling and holding back from attacking me. Little Lafia, stunned, seemed to be shocked by the words I said. After a while, Finn spoke again while still looking at me. I think you have some point in your words, some members of my family did wrong with you. He admitted. So we owe you an apology for that. Hey, you're not serious, are you, Finn? Bet snarled. Be quiet, Bet, we are at fault for some things he said. Riviera silenced Bet. Yes, I can't deny that either. I wouldn't want our family to start getting such a reputation. Gareth admitted. I can't change what happened, but I will owe you and your family a favor, I believe you deserve that at least after all the mess our family caused during this month. When he said those words, I had to put my anger aside a bit. I'm a reasonable person when I see sincerity, and there's no reason to hate them, despite almost killing Bell and killing Reekling in front of me. Sorry, A's, for the attack, it's not uncommon to see a monster in the streets of Oreo, and she acted out of hatred. Riviera took the initiative for A's, as the girl clearly doesn't know how to handle her apologies. It's not me you owe an apology to, it's this guy here. I pointed to the goblin beside me, who had been quiet the whole time while observing. He. He murmured when everyone looked at him. I don't know why you hate monsters so much. Elite. But not everything is as it seems. Reekling here is a summon, not a tamed monster. And indeed, I am angry at you for attacking him in front of me. I admit it as my gaze went to Ace. I'm only saying this because you helped Bell train after all, but it doesn't mean I'll be your friend. However, I hope you respect this little guy here. I expressed my thoughts to the stoic woman. Of course, when I said it was a summon, the two mages in the group were stunned. Anyone in Oreo or anywhere in the world with magic like that would obviously attract attention. But this wasn't the time to ask that kind of question. Sozzy. Ace finally spoke to Reekling. Of course, she still had a look as if she were in front of a mystery, even though it's a summon, for her, monsters are evil and try to kill anyone around them. He. Reekling seemed to accept. This earned some smiles, while Bet was still in a bad mood. I don't blame you for attacking A's after what she did, but I wouldn't forgive if it happened in front of me. Regardless of who is right or wrong, I won't let anyone hurt my family. Finn threatened me this time. Well, then we're quite alike. I shrugged, not caring about his threat for too long. Let's go, the kid will be able to return to the surface safely, and we'll continue our raid without further interruptions, along with the rest of the family, who are waiting for us. He said, after a few seconds of silence, turning and heading towards the lower floors. Tisk! Snarling and clicking his tongue, the dog followed his leader with the same bad mood. Aes and the Amazons looked at me and then at Bell before turning and going with their commander. Riviera looked at me with complicated eyes, now I didn't know much about why. I know we're getting involved in a lot of things directly and indirectly, but I believe almost all our bad sides should cease after this conversation. I like her, really, but our families are creating too much friction to establish a friendship and get to know her better. This lasted until she turned around and followed her group, but noticed she stopped her steps when she realized that one person stayed in the same place. Lafia? Any problem? She asked, and I looked at the little elf who was staring intensely at me. How? She asked hesitating, making everyone in the group stop and turn their eyes in doubt at the words of the little elf who was still standing, looking at me. Huh? How what? I asked still not knowing the reason for the question. How can you increase your magical power so much? She asked with great astonishment in her tone. I feel like you're four times stronger than the last time we met at the bar, almost bordering on the peak of a level two adventurer when I raised my level to three. She exclaimed, making everyone open their eyes in surprise with these words. I sighed. So that's it? I have 1,755 magic now, but still, in normal terms, this amount of static in magic should be from a level 2 adventurer mage with 755 in magic, but I'm still level 1 and have these monstrous points, that's what anyone who saw this in me would be stunned. 
and Lafia is a genius who can even be compared to a little bell, as far as I know, in magical terms. As a mage raised as Riviera's successor in the Loki family, she has special abilities, which surprised me because she could even see my magical power, something that not even Riviera could see clearly. You can see that? I asked without hiding my amused smile, which made everyone frown with my words. I am the greatest magical potential in this world, girl. Don't be so surprised. I said simply. I like being in the shadows without drawing attention while I strengthen myself, but I would admit these words out loud and without regrets. She looked at me scowling at my arrogant words. She immediately denied it. For her, Riviera is the greatest mage in the world, while everyone else was stunned by my boldness, I didn't care. But I can tell you one of my secrets, of course, if you help me have a date with a certain green-haired elf. I said shamelessly with a big smile. Everyone had different faces after these words. Gareth burst into laughter, the Amazons looked at me with open mouths, A's and Finn had no expressions, Dogbet wanted to kill me with his look and was ready to pounce on me. Lafia simply stood wordless. I think I broke her, I thought as I looked at a frozen Lafia in place. But the same elf who was the reason for my words, no longer had such a stoic expression. Upon hearing that, she averted her gaze with a slightly embarrassed face, clearly not accustomed to this kind of male attention. No one dared to hit on an elvish princess in such a powerful family like Loki. I know we're not on the best terms, and our relationship is quite complicated, but I still wouldn't miss the opportunity, since I'm naturally like this and wouldn't miss showing my intentions with the beautiful magical nerd. Lafia simply turned around with a red face and went to the group infuriated. It didn't take long for them to start walking again, although Bet still wanted to hit me, and Riviera looked at me from time to time as they walked away. Chapter 25 Level 2 in Record Time Lucius POV Oreo Dungeon 8th Floor I put Bell on my back and let Reekling assist Lily as we began to make our way back to the surface not long after the Loki family left. However, as we returned, I couldn't help but regret speaking so arrogantly to the members of the Loki family, not for the people in front of me, but for the sudden presence of the sinister gaze I received after uttering those words. Purple eyes that pierced my soul in milliseconds, a feeling of helplessness made me doubt if I could face that woman head on. Freya, I noticed Freya looking at me for the first time, there was no doubt it was her. Fortunately, it was a brief moment, I hope her focus is only on Belle, as he has been eye-catching like in the anime, and the waitress seer had no interest in me other than being a new member of the Hestia family. An hour and a half later, we were in the dungeon hall. I had to take Belle and Lily straight to the guild infirmary and ask someone to inform Hestia. It didn't take long for her to arrive, a very worried Loli. I explained the situation to her to calm down a bit. When Belle woke up, she was relieved, and I left them in peace as I returned to spend some more time in the dungeon that day. I will spend the next few days earning points to buy the healing spell and prepare to face Goliath on the intermediate floors. I haven't gone beyond the thirteenth floor, but if I have magic that heals me, I can take down Goliath in a more hand-to-hand -hand fight. I was confident in that. After spending hours in the dungeon for the rest of the day, when I returned to the church at night, it was already dark and Bell was already here. Not surprisingly, the place was lively, it seemed like there was a party as I found Bell and Hestia dancing and Lily singing, while there was a lot of food and drink. Bell upgraded his status and reached level 0 too, so the celebration was understandable. After they gave me the news, I congratulated them. I am sincerely happy for Bell. I am the type of person who may be arrogant but wants to live life intensely with honest arrogance. I am not the type who wants to dominate the world and control everything and everyone. I just want to live my life without interfering and bothering anyone unnecessarily, let alone gain from people. I am happy for Bell and want him to achieve his dreams, whether it's getting stronger or winning his blonde-haired girl. I will never stand in the way of his goals. I don't deny that I wanted a development skill like his, but I don't really feel jealous of his abilities. I think he deserves it for his achievements. The next day, Hestia and Bell went to the guild to update the new level 02 adventurer, and I went to train with Mikoto again and soon after, went to the dungeon. I only left during the late afternoon. I don't need to see how Oreo was in chaos because of Bell, as the boy's record was posted on the guild bulletin board. A month. He did it in one month. I've been at level 1 for three years without reaching rank B. How is this possible? exclaimed a furious and envious adventurer. Obviously they're deceiving us. The boy was an adventurer before joining the family, and they started counting his time after the new Falna, shouted another indignant one. 
Poor jealous souls. I said mentally as I walked through the crowd of people coming out of the dungeon and discussing the news. Reekling was by my side, quiet, as we walked through the streets. Now everyone knew about a goblin tamed by an adventurer, and some even greeted me and my partner. Even if it's just someone carrying a backpack as support, the news about Reekling spread throughout the city, and rumors that he was actually a unique summon, as many saw at the guild entrance with my confrontation with A's. Funny thing is, that didn't stop many from trying to tame some goblins in the dungeon, as the idea of using them as support was genuinely appealing. However, no one succeeded, even the Ganesha family tried, but without results to use them like I use Reekling. The Palums wanted to kill Reekling after that, but they never did anything in my presence or spoke that in front of me, but I knew there was a hate fan club against me. How do I know? Because new nicknames emerged, something like, Genemy of the entire Palum race, De Archenemy of Fianna, De Cursed Job Stealer. These little ones have creativity, I can't deny that. I thought ironically. A god even approached me these days, wanting to know if I wanted to sell my pet monster. Like many adventurers, I had to turn them all down. Reekling is special to me and the only one I've accepted as a partner so far. I wouldn't let him even if it were possible to sell him as he is a summon. I just had to be careful with the monster dealers hidden in the city, but they will be disappointed when they discover the truth about my goblin. When I arrived at the church, I noticed a red-haired man talking to Bell. It was the famous Welfkratzo. They probably met today, and Bell is asking for a new armor and weapon, if I'm not mistaken, as they discuss. They are also organizing a small expedition slash raid on the intermediate floors in the next few days, if I am correct. Lucia San, said Bell when he noticed me approaching in the church. Hello, Bell, and you, must be Mr. Kratzo, right? I asked, turning to the redhead, who was a bit stunned. That's right, do you know me? He asked surprised. Yes, my name is Lucius Drakenar. I was your customer for a while, even got into a fight with a dwarf in a Hephaestus store because of your name, believe it? I said laughing. I was you? I couldn't believe it when I heard about the fight. Everyone in my family hates you now. I'd avoid crossing paths with them on the higher floors of the tower or in the dungeon if possible. He said awkwardly at the end, realizing what kind of trouble I got into. I started to laugh. Ha 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 ha. I have to admit your family is quite resentful, but I'm not too concerned about their hatred. I was having fun with this situation. Is that true, Mr. Lucius? Bell was surprised by this. You know me, Bell. I pick fights everywhere I go, ha 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 ha. I continued to laugh at my adventures in Orio so far. After I gained awareness of the land, I can't believe I hadn't stirred up like a madman in this city in two years here. In a month, I became known as an enemy of the Hephaedus family, an enemy of the Loki family, an enemy of the Palums, and known as the only monster tamer who can roam freely through the city, something not even Ganesha's adventurers can do. So, I'm quite famous now, maybe not as much as a record holder like Bell, but I prefer to be known as a troublemaker than a rising super prodigy for now. Wait. Is that a goblin with a backpack? Kratzo, noticing Reekling for the first time, exclaimed in shock. I heard of this absurdity too, although I had no idea it came from the Hestia family, you're quite noisy indeed. Kratzo said, laughing while scratching his head. Now seeing that I'm a bit famous and popular, even without many people knowing my name. But answer me, you were a customer, not anymore, right? He spoke again with curiosity, changing the subject and absorbing the whole goblin business. He's more interested in his craft. Not because I dislike your quality, but I changed my sword style. Instead of using the classic shape, I'm now using a curved katana, but that can change if you make one for me. One with lightning resistance, preferably. I said with a smile. I still want your swords, one with resistance to withstand the charges of my lightning spells. We can do this. What kind of katana do you want, any preferences? He asked me excitedly, and I stated my conditions and fighting style. He thought for a moment and spoke. I need materials for this. If you can get them, I'll produce it and only charge for the labor. He concluded, and I agreed. He took out a sheet from his pocket and wrote down. I got a list of materials and their respective floors, thinking about when I can collect them, as there are some materials I can only obtain on a level higher than my current one. In the end, they invited me to a small raid on the intermediate floors as well, but I declined, saying that I need to train. And now that Bell has reached level 02, I can't fall behind him, so I have to strive to get stronger. After saying goodbye to them, I entered through the broken door of the church. 
Hello, Hestia. I greeted Hestia as soon as I entered. Lusuiskun. Have you heard about Bell? She asked a bit worried. When I left the dungeon, everyone was talking about him. The next Anatus will happen in a few days, right? I asked curiously. Yes, I'm a bit scared. I didn't know his level up would be so astounding. Now there are many gods with their eyes on Bell. She said disheartened knowing the future. She's not wrong. I won't say it'll be easy from here on, but we must overcome all challenges together. Don't worry. I said with a smile. She looked at me for a moment and gave a big smile. You're right, Lucius Kuhn. Let's fight anyone who harms our family. She raised her fist and put another hand on her hip, striking a pose. We're here. Bell announced, entering with a lily full of shopping bags. Bell Kayuan. Hestia wasted no time and ran to greet her first child. H.E., I heard my goblin beside me. Yes, we were ignored in the middle of a conversation. But that's how it goes, haha. I said with a smile, knowing this family quite well. I'm used to the antics of the little lowly goddess. Anyway, I'll lie down for a bit. I said, heading towards the bed after taking a shower. I paused to think about my plans with the list Kratzo made. I knew I would have to enter the 15th floor for the more expensive materials, but I won't have any problem with that if I get stronger. Mikoto informed me today that she will be going to the dungeon starting tomorrow, so I'll have plenty of time to grow in stats. My swordsmanship skills need to be polished significantly, as I'm still a beginner fighting against my undisciplined muscle memory, but I've improved a lot in the last two weeks, no doubt. I've learned a lot from Mikoto and ended up becoming a low-level swordsman in her eyes, now I just need to practice and improve. Chapter 26 Getting Healing and Venturing into the Intermediates Chapter Size 1657 Words Lucius POV Dungeon 12th Floor Lightning Weapon Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
He suddenly said reekling beside me, interrupting my thoughts. What? I asked suspiciously. He reekling said again, pointing his finger at one of the tunnels. Are you sure? I asked. He I understood what he was saying and focused on that side. Reekling had better hearing than me. I noticed far away after focusing in that direction, a sound of someone desperately asking for help. My goblin was right. Okay, let's help, I'll clear the monsters, and you follow right behind, got it? I said. He. He confirmed. Even if he died with some monster catching him from behind, I could resummon him, but I can't take too long, as everything disappears from the backpack if I take more than two minutes to resummon him. I tested it because it would be like a kind of spatial storage, but I found out that things disappear if he's absent for more than that time. Of course, he also hates dying, but we needed to help this person who was asking for help. I ran in the direction of the distress call, killing many monsters along the way, using magic this time, clearing the entire corridor. I reached a larger room made of dungeon stones, there, I found five minotaurs trying to get into a hole in the dungeon walls. Clearly, there was an adventurer trying to hide from these monsters while they tried to kill the poor guy trapped. Strength boost spell. A blue light shone around my body. Speed boost spell. A green light also shone. Lightning spell, lightning weapon. An aura of thin lightning appeared on the sword. I jumped behind the group and beheaded the first one, and before they reacted, I killed another two. After that, I just continued to dodge and cut the limbs of the last two to finish, concluding this fight very quickly. Stab slash dodge stab. Eliminating the last minotaur, I advanced to the hole where there was a tearful voice. Hello? Is everything okay now? I've eliminated all the minotaurs, I said, alerting the person who was scared there, in that hole. A while later, she started coming out, still quite cautious, it must have been traumatic seeing how they cornered her. I wonder what happened for her to stay here alone, did her companions die? Thank you. Said a figure that slowly appeared in front of me as she got up, it was a dark-haired human. No problem, but can you tell me what happened to you? I asked curiously. The girls from my family and I are still at the beginning of level 02, but due to our recklessness, we thought we could face the intermediates. We were cornered by several minotaurs while they ran, I stayed and hid here in this hole, thought I was going to die. She said embarrassed but started crying. Then thank you, thank you for saving my life. She suddenly threw herself into me with a tearful hug, she didn't seem to want to let go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She kept repeating. If you want to thank someone, thank this goblin here. I took her out of my arms and pointed to the little green backpacker who had arrived in the room without problems. He said reekling when he came to my side, making the girl enchanted with this creature, murmuring acute. Let's go to the twelfth floor, someone can help you get back to the surface from there. I said with a bit of regret, as I had to go to the seventeenth floor, but I wouldn't let this girl die here like this. Returning to the upper floors, she became calmer, and we introduced ourselves. She belonged to the Aphrodite family, a blonde goddess with green eyes. She and Hestia tease each other all the time, just like my goddess does with Loki, but in a different way. Seeing me clearing out groups of monsters on our way, she also asked me about the spells I was casting since she was a mage and had never seen a mage use spells on their weapons and body enhancement spells just to fight in battles. Even more so, one using a mage cloak like mine, since I didn't wear armor other than the cloth of the cloak, I hadn't had my leather armor for a long time. She didn't believe when I said I was level 01. According to her, even with four level 2 adventurers in her team, they couldn't walk as carefree on these floors as I am doing now. For me, it was quite easy as I faced all the monsters on these floors, I still had long-distance spells in case of an emergency, but I kept fighting only with my sword. Finally, we reached the 12th floor. I was fortunate to find and ask some adventurers from a trusted family to take her along with the group to the surface. She can handle herself being a level 2 mage, but she is still scared due to the event with the minotaurs, and her hand still trembles without being able to concentrate. She didn't leave before saying that she would repay someday for my help and for her goddess's help too, but she said there's nothing to owe. As soon as I said goodbye, I returned as quickly as I could to the 15th, heading to the 16th now. Finding nothing new on this floor, I continued slicing everything I found and healing from injuries when I received any. Sometime later, I was on the 17th floor. I killed monsters until I reached where I wanted, in the huge boss room. However, I found nothing in this place, it was frustrating. 
I spent four hours wandering on the floor and killing everything to pass the time until Goliath appeared, but the boss didn't respawn for me to complete my mission. Then, I remembered that the big monster would respawn when Bell comes to this floor with Welf and Lily on his back. This will happen after the Loki family returns from the deep floors to restock in the city one floor below this. I had no choice but to go to Rivera since returning to the surface and coming back here would just be a waste of time and it wouldn't take long for the Loki family to show up. I know our relationship is quite complicated, so I intend to keep to myself while I'm here without them needing to save Belle and the others, 